Hi everyone, welcome back to another YouTube video. Welcome to my channel. If you don't subscribe already, then don't forget to subscribe. Turn on the little notification bell and you'll be alerted anytime I create a new video. So today's video then, as you can tell by the title, is going to be a what I eat in a day. Um, now this is gonna be very high protein and I don't really tend to focus on carbs or fats. I just do whatever goes with the meals. I'm not vegetarian or vegan. If you haven't seen my previous what I eat in a day, then I do have some vegetarian options in that video so if you want to go ahead and click over to that one then you can do um i will try and put it up on the screen for you as well anywho today's video might not be as vegetarian as the previous one but that's just how my life is it's day by day i tend to just go with what i'm feeling on the day so yeah it's currently i went to look at my watch then i've got a bobble on my wrist so <laughs> it was a watch it is currently around like 11 a.m now and so far i've eaten nothing I do tend to go to the gym on an empty stomach and I will have like a coffee or something just to kind of give me that little bit of an energy boost. But as far as actually eating before training, I don't tend to do that just because I train so early in the morning. Um, I go to the gym as soon as it opens, so around six o'clock in the morning, which is pretty early. Um, but that's just when I tend to like being in the gym the most. It's just quieter, the, you know, you can get more stuff done more machines are free, more weights are free, etc, etc. So I have already trained this morning. I did some upper body and yeah, we did that. I did some rear delts and my rear delts are so sore, like so sore, dude. So I'm basically just gonna start breakfast now instead of rambling on any longer. Um, And yeah, I will show you what I'm making. Let's go. Okay, so first off then, I'm making some eggs. Eggs is definitely a big one that I go for, just because obviously high protein, low calories. Um, and I do mix it with a little bit of carbs. I do have some sandwich thins, which are 100 calories each. I will just show you. So I get these ones. So I'm just gonna spray the pan with some spray light. Not much. To be honest, this shit doesn't even work anyway. Every single time it still gets stuck to the pan. So I don't know why I waste the calories. But we move. So I'm going to have three eggs. I'm going to chop a little bit of onion up just because I like to have a little bit of something in there. Then I've got some basil. I'm just going to sprinkle that all over. In with the parsley. I do have some fresh parsley here as well which I'm just going to rip up and on and then salt which I'm definitely not pouring over the pan because I will probably pour the whole thing in there and then die of sodium poisoning and then pepper okay so while we're here I am just gonna make my protein shake you'll have to excuse the fact that I'm using a coffee cup I haven't got a shaker at the moment I always tend to leave protein in them and then they smell like a dead body, so I always have to throw them away. So at the moment I'm currently waiting, so I'm gonna use a little blender. So I'm just gonna do one scoop of that. Now I hate protein, absolutely hate it. And the thought of this is honestly making me want to throw up, but we do it for the gains. And then I'm gonna put in 140 ml of milk. I would usually use oat milk for this, but I haven't got any at the moment. I haven't got a lot of things at the moment, so we just do what we can. I'm just gonna blend that in. Get out. All this lifting weights and I can't even get this fucking thing out. 2,000 years later. Despite the fact that I use the spray, I can guarantee that this shit is stuck. So we're just gonna scrape it off and salvage what we can with it. Bread. So I think the total for this is around 200, three, three, 370 I think. 370 for the breakfast and then that's about 170. And I am gonna have a fizzy drink because I'm disgusting and have fizzy drinks for breakfast. This is like literally one of the best fizzy drinks. If you haven't tried it, try it. It is amazing. It's also lower calorie than like other fizzy drinks, you know, like Coke and all that. I only have one a day, don't kill me. That is my breakfast. Uh, probably gonna vomit with that, but then I'll wash it down with that. 
should be good to go. I will leave all the macros on the screen and the MyFitnessPal as well for the total calories and stuff like that. And then I'm going to sit down and have a little chat with you about fat loss and muscle gain. So losing fat while maintaining muscle. I know it's difficult, it's something I have recently come across that I am or have been struggling with but finally figured out. So I am going to delve into a little bit about that and what I'm doing in order to obviously maintain my muscle and lose fat still. Right, so I'm just going to sit and eat this while I explain. Oh, just looking at this protein shake. There is a difference between weight loss and fat loss. Now, the two processes are obviously very different. Now, I, I knew this at the beginning, however, I just kind of thought, I don't really care if I lose a little bit of muscle mass, I'm just going to do it anyway. But then, gradually, as I started to lose the muscle mass, I was actually like, um, okay, don't like this. So I've decided to flip my game up a little bit. Um, obviously, I am in the final week of the Greg Doucette diet, and I have lost a lot of weight, a significant amount of weight. And my physique has definitely changed a lot since the beginning. Um, but yeah, I think this, this approach, I suppose, will still help me to lose a significant amount of weight also while maintaining muscle because I wasn't making a point of my protein before. Now, I've always known you need protein to gain muscle. I'm aware it's just the simple basics of muscle gain. If you go back to my older videos, I've always said it. However, I have been struggling recently to hit my protein because I found out that actually I'm supposed to be having one gram, if not more, per pound of body weight. Now, I weigh 140 pounds now-ish, <laughs> so I've got to hit 140 grams of protein per day and all that while keeping it under around 1400 calories. Let me just eat a bit of this before it goes cold. I'm so glad that's over. So back to what I was saying. Um, so a lot of the misconceptions then that I see or that I originally had myself were that you could cut out food groups. Now, obviously this works for some people. However, for the vast majority of people, this is not going to work. You aren't supposed to do this. Um, especially not if you want to keep your muscle. A lot of people tend to think to cut out carbs or to cut out fat. I don't really understand where the hatred has come from for these macro groups, but all you need to know is that you should not be cutting either of them out. You can have one lower than the other if need be, but both of them have a pretty important role. Now, especially for women, women do need more fat than men, so men would be better off with like a lower fat diet, or they could withstand a lower fat diet than obviously women could, because women have hormones. I know guys have hormones too, but women have other hormones that need fats. Otherwise, we're gonna go crazy. So, this is where the problem lies because so many women are scared of fat and so many women are scared of carbs. We shouldn't be treating protein as a fuel source. That should just be considered like a building block that we need in order to build the muscle. However, we're gonna actually need fuel in order to do the, like, the muscle building process, which is obviously lifting weights or if you, you're losing weight, then cardio. You need energy in order to obviously complete these tasks. So this is where you need to make sure that you're getting both types of macronutrients or all three types of macronutrients, should I say. Um, you need your proteins, you need your fats, you need your carbs. Protein is the most important one. If you were looking to lose, I nearly said lose muscle, if you are looking to lose fat and keep your lean mass, also known as your muscle mass. And this is obviously because the more protein you have readily available, the easier your body is going to build the muscle. There's a thing, I'm just gonna go with thing, in your body that basically tells your body that it's okay to build muscle. We have the extra protein, we have the extra energy to build muscle and we're not trying to hold onto anything so it's okay to complete the muscle building process. If you haven't got enough protein readily available, your body will not go through with the process of muscle building because it hasn't got the sufficient nutrients. Going cold. 
First step then to obviously keeping your muscle mass and losing weight is eating protein. You need to make sure that you're getting at least one gram per pound of your body weight. Um, and you can obviously figure this out by weighing yourself, whatever you need to do, figure it out and aim to get that. You can track it using MyFitnessPal, that's the way that I do it. Also, some of you might not know, protein does have a thermic effect of food. It is a lot higher than that of fats or carbs because they can be easily transferred into fat stores. Whereas protein has to physically be transferred into a fat to be stored on your body. The more protein you eat, the more calories you're actually going to burn of the food that you are intaking. Um, and this is really important because it means that you can actually eat a little bit more if you are having a high protein diet. Um, obviously, I'd be really careful with how much you eat, like over, um, but it is possible if you really want to work out and get down to the nitty gritty of things, um, you can eat a little bit more just because you're burning more calories, which obviously gives you more calories to play with to add more protein in, which is really, really good. Keep track of your protein and that is one of the biggest, biggest things that will help you. Next, we have Le Drink. ASMR. Work out what your BMR is. Now, your BMR is your resting metabolic rate, so what you burn if you were to just do absolutely nothing all day. Literally, like in a coma on a bed doing nothing. Given that information then you should utilize that and basically either add or take away. I would probably say best to either stick to that number because obviously this is what you burn at the very minimum. If, if you do tend to sit on your ass all day doing not very much then you'll probably burn maybe about a couple hundred extra calories on top of that Um, just you know walking to the toilet, walking to the TV, walking wherever, whatever it might be. If you are pretty sedentary then I wouldn't go higher I'd probably just stick to the BMR so whatever your BMR is just eat that amount of calories and you will definitely still lose weight from this because you are still doing more than just lying on a bed dead basically so if you are very sedentary then you could even go a little lower than your BMR so maybe to like you know like a hundred less 150 less I wouldn't do it too drastic because it's a bit of a, a risky area um, going lower than your BMR it can cause issues with your metabolism and all that kind of stuff so just try and avoid that as best as you can and before you think about going underneath your BMR try to do a little bit more exercise even if it means going on a 15 minute walk every day just just try a little something just something but obviously if you really really can't if you have circumstances where you physically cannot do that then by all means go a little bit lower than your BMR to lose weight if you are like me and you are active like most days of the week then I would say See, this is also a difficult one. This is one that I struggle with um, because I do weight training and I don't tend to do that much cardio. Now, as some of you might know, weight training does not burn that many calories unless you are going like ham. And I tend to, I go hard, like I, I do, you know, I am sweaty and tired and whatever, but, and I lift heavy, but it's just kind of one of those things you never know. Um, so what I do, is I have my BMR and I added 200 calories to that and I basically just go off that because that still helps me to lose weight and um, it's all about kind of gauging it for yourself I would say your BMR is a great basis though if you want to start by eating your BMR for a week see how much weight you lose if you're losing too much then you know that you are massively massively under eating if you're losing like just enough not too much then maybe just stick to your BMR um, it's obviously so difficult to gauge how many calories you're burning in a day and these Fitbits and stuff they're just not accurate so go off what your body's telling you it is okay to weigh yourself obviously try not to let it become a bad habit but it is okay to weigh yourself and use it as a measure to see what's going on in terms of how much you need to eat or if you need to eat a little bit less um for me i raised my calories to 1700 this last week and i gained some weight however i still felt lean which was weird but i think it could be muscle so there's another issue that you will come across if you're trying to lose weight and gain muscle the only way that you're going to know about like what's going on is by how you look because the scales are gonna to start to be all skewed, you're gonna to start to gain weight because you're gaining muscle, when really you're losing body fat. And obviously DEXA scans are not accurate, so if you're getting body fat percentages from your little weighing scales that cost you 20 quid, not gonna be very accurate. I'm sorry to tell you, but 
is the truth. But obviously with muscle building as well, you do not want to be in too much of a calorie deficit. As we know, the optimum circumstance for building muscle is to be in a calorie surplus. So that means that you're eating more than what your body needs to function, including all of your exercise and everything else that you do in the day. This is just basically because it allows the body the excess nutrients, the excess energy to complete the processes and it basically allows it to accept that yes we're not starving, we don't need to hold on to anything, we've got plenty of food coming in to do the muscle building process at like a higher rate basically. So you will gain muscle a little bit quicker if you are in a surplus but it is possible to do it in a deficit. I have done it these biceps didn't come out of nowhere. <laughs> and so that is obviously the reason why you don't want to be in too low of a deficit. I'd say 250, 300 max calories in a deficit if you're looking to build muscle at the same time. You don't want your body to start thinking it's starving. You don't want it to start trying to hold on to stuff because if it is holding on to stuff, the likelihood is, is it's not actually completing any muscle building processes and you just, you, your weight training is basically pointless. So just be careful with this. Again, you you do want to try and lose weight as slowly as possible if you're trying to build muscle or maintain it for that matter. So to summarize then, it is three things, lots of protein, figure out your BMR and eat based off of that. So gauge either way. And then the last thing, obviously don't go in too much of a calorie deficit. You do want to be trying to eat as much food and get in as much protein as possible. More protein requires more calories, so you need to be eating a higher amount of calories. Um, not necessarily in a surplus, but if you want to do that, then you aren't going to lose weight, of course, we all know that. Um, and yeah, just, just do your best. They're my tips anyway for figuring it out um, how I did. If you are enjoying this video so far, then don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Turn on the notification bell because there will be more content from me. And I will let you watch the rest of this what I eat in a day and leave you alone. Bye! Oh.